Uh, thanks for giving Footy Matters your time today. Um, Liverpool have made a poor start to the season. What do you think the expectation should be at Anfield for this coming season? Well, I, th I think you know we like to finish uh, as high as possible in the league. You know, the top four would be uh, you no know, great if they done that, but uh, we have to be realistic. And I think you know uh, we have to finish. Uh, we try and finish higher than what we did last season. That's that's what it's all about. It's not going to be easy, but there's a lot of teams varying for that top four position. And I think Liverpool can start winning the home games. I think they can they can do that. I mean, people are already asking the question that. Uh, Brendan Rodgers' style doesn't suit Steven Gerrard's style of play. Do you think that will have a major impact on the team or do you think Steven will learn to mould into this new system that they're playing? Players can play in any in any uh, system, and Steven Gerrard is a great player. So I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much about that. Steven Gerrard can play in any team in, in any system because he's such a great player. And Brendan has his own philosophy of playing. It, it'll take time for the players to adjust that, but uh, no, great players will do that. And I, I have no worries about Steven doing that. Uh, but one of the players who didn't survive the cut was Andy Carroll. Do you think that was a mistake to let him go, or do you think that's something that's best in the long term for Liverpool? Well, yeah, I think you're just looking at the long term. You know, I think Andy Carroll, you know, he could progress. I think when you see him playing, you know, he played for West Ham. And he had a great, uh, great start for West Ham because they played to the way Andy Carroll likes. And you know, Big Sam likes to get the ball and play, you know, right up to the front where Liverpool's. It's more of a passing movement. So, uh, you know, I think it'll suit both Andy, you know, and for Liverpool, you know, uh, because it's no good. And he's just sitting on the bench there. You know, he needs to be playing, and he needs a good year of playing football. And I think it'll do him good. Yeah. Um, moving on from from Liverpool, a lot of modern teams and managers now play just the one man up front. Do you think that's the system that you'd have liked to have played in? Or would you have to, <laughs> would you have to modify your game for that? You'd have to modify your game. I have played up front uh, in Europe, away from home for Liverpool, and also quite a lot for Wales. But uh, you have to—it's a hell of a lot of running, and I think that the people that um, benefit are most probably the midfielders because uh, you know it's very difficult for someone up front to, to be by themselves. And I think uh, everyone likes to play in a number ten position now in the hole where they get free and get chances, and and it's very difficult for for someone to do that. It takes a big, strong lad. You have to hold the ball up. You know, you have to. Lot of running and uh, you know yeah you don't mind doing it in certain games but all season you no know, personally if it's myself no I wouldn't have liked to done that. Interesting. I mean, you mentioned about playing um, away in Europe for Liverpool, but generally you also went to Juventus. How was the experience of playing abroad? Yeah, it was, it was a great experience. You know, it's a learning curve. You know, I come back a much better player. I most likely didn't score as many goals as uh, when I come back from Liverpool, but I came back a better uh, football man, and uh, that's what going to Italy was. Uh, you are, even at Italy, a lot of them I was playing the front by myself. You know, uh, two people marking you. And uh, it, was, it was very difficult to adjust, but uh, you'll adjust to it eventually. And uh, again, you know, the players have to adjust to your style as well. But uh, you know, I think I, I learned much more about the game the year I was in Italy. Um, so, um, what did you miss most about the English game while you were out there, and um, what from playing abroad would you have liked to have brought back to the English game? Well, I think um, what you miss most probably more abroad is the team spirit. You know, I think when you're playing in England, especially Liverpool, we had a great uh, we had great team spirit, and we all played for each other. Yeah. I think in Italy and uh, and obviously you know Juventus, a lot of it was individuals, and uh, you know as long as they played well, it wasn't matter what the team wins. But I think with Liverpool, the most important thing was that the team won, and we had a great we had a great team spirit, and I think. That was the. That's what I miss more than more than anything. Uh, no, going to Italy and no, I'd love to bring that, brought that into in Juventus, but uh, it didn't happen. But well, you're learning more about the game. I think um, what I what I brought back there was uh, more about my knowledge of football when I came back from Italy, and uh, you know, I learned more about different positions where, you know, I think, in, when I when I left Italy, I was like mostly in in the in the box player. When I came back from Italy, I was more like round. You know, I was in the halfway line, so I became a better all all round player. Um, why do you think it is that more British players don't go and play abroad? I think it's different now. I think because uh, financially, it's all uh, the money's in England. And I think at the time when I was, it was a, uh, it was in Italy. And with Wales not qualifying for the major tournaments, uh, no, I had to go. I wanted to play against, you know, when you see Diego Maradona, you know, Michelle Platino, Michael Van Basten. They all played. They were all in Italy at that time, and that's where that's where it was. And I wanted to go and uh, see what it was like to play against them. Um, speaking of Wales. Um, how do you think they're currently set, and who do you think are the young players to watch out for in the Wales national setup? Well, I think you're looking, you know, difficult group. You know, I think Wales can have a winner group, or you know, come fourth. You know, that's how tight the group is, and uh, the big game will be Belgium uh, tonight. Because Belgium got some up and coming stars. You know, they they look a really, really good team, Belgium. But I think from the Wales point of view, they've got to take. You know, uh, um, you no know, Gareth Bale without doubt one of the best players in the world. You know, uh, he needs to perform. You know, Aaron Ramsey's another one there. You know, you've got these two these two players. As um, 
young one, Joe Allen, just signed for Liverpool, you know. So they've got the basis of the side there, but they've just got to put it together, you know, when they play for the country. Um, just going moving on to moving back to some of your career, um, what was your um, favourite goal that you scored? I don't have a favourite goal. People, a lot of people ask me, it's most, most, most asked questions, and uh, I have a favourite game because my job was to score goals. And, um, you know, every goal I've scored from one yard or 30 yards, you know, I got the same feeling when I scored. But I think in 1986, when we beat Everton in the FA Cup final, it was the first time Liverpool had won the double. You know, it was uh, the first Merseyside uh, FA Cup to played. And for me then, Liverpool and Everton were the best two teams in Europe, not just England. And we just beaten them the week before to win the league. And again, you know, losing 1-0 half-time uh, and to win the game 3-1. My dream as a kid was to go to win a goal in the FA Cup final. And I achieved it you know, when, I, when I scored two goals um, against Everton. So that's something that was special for me. Um, and who was the best player you played with and against? No, I think it's not hard. The best player I played with is Kenny Dalglish. You know, he was, he was great. We just um, we just had a great rapport. You know, uh, no, I was I, I, I was very quick then, and uh, Kenny would put the ball in space, and um, it was just like was, the, the understanding was unbelievable on the pitch. And uh, so, it, without doubt, Kenny Dalglish. And the best against. There's two really. When I was in Italy, Franco Baresi, he was a, he was a great player. You know, he was um, he wasn't the quickest, but I never really got past him because his reading of the game was so so good. Like that. And the other one I would say was Paul McGrath, Manchester United. He was absolutely incredible. He was very quick. He didn't look it, but he's very quick. He, he always got on with his job. He's a good head of the ball. And I think uh, Paul McGrath most probably very underrated because uh, I think he was an absolute superb defender. Good stuff. And finally, it's our signature question: um, Why does footy matter to you? That's I've been brought up with, you know, I brought up when I ever since I could play football, you know, I love the game and it's a game globally that people like, you know, where you can have all problems throughout the world, but football brings all these people together and uh, it was for me, it was incredible to play and uh, to play at the highest level and now when I see, um, you know, football, I love watching games now, so that's what it's all about, you know, just enjoying yourself. Thank you very much, Ian.